Hello, um, my name is Nick Keller. I am with Dell IT. Lived in uh, South Texas, which explained the twang. <laughs> and uh, um, South, you know, South Texas, yes. Take a left, swim a few hours, and then you're home. Uh, um, and I am part of Dell IT, which means that I am a consumer, a user of all the stuff that is being talked about today. And like everybody in IT, I had to basically come in with a baseball bat to try to convince people that this private cloud thing might be a good idea. And so I will talk to you about three things. First one is why IT today need to innovate. Okay. Two, what, are, so the, what is the right way to innovate? And finally, what we are doing in our lab? Um, if you saw the Dell keynote yesterday, there was a mention of an innovation lab. This is what I have built with my team. And so I will uh, tell you a bit more about that. So first thing, why IT needs to innovate, OK? You know, a big thing that we want to make sure is make sure that Dell IT can start using new technologies so that we can hopefully get out of the 1980s. Okay. And when doing that, make sure that it makes sense from a financial point of view. So our CIO, Andy, gave us some very, very clear directions. Okay. Basically, go ahead, disrupt, make sure that there is a lot of value for users. Okay. Incubate on steroids. And it's not this easy because, as you know, IT is all about stability, establishing a comfort zone. Okay? If it works, do not touch it, period. And then, if you try to hire someone who's just getting out of college, they don't know what a computer is. The only device that they know is a cell phone. Okay? very far from the nice green screen that you have been using to manage your customer that is working perfectly fine. Okay. So there's a lot of conflict right there. Technology is evolving so fast and user experience evolving so fast. Internet access, people can do stuff at home, watch movies, uh, turn off their lights remotely from the internet inside their house. Now control the temperature inside the house remotely. That's a lot better than what a lot of IT can offer them. So how can we make that better? Okay, that is the biggest conflict, the biggest challenge when fighting against the fact that any CIO needs to provide a stable environment. Okay. And uh, the key, a key metric is really to improve the user experience. Because at the end of the day, IT is being used by people, okay? Usually, you know, if you have a large IT organization in a large company, nobody likes IT, okay? Because IT is the people that are going to take six weeks to give you a laptop, and they're going to give you the wrong one, okay? Then if you dare break it, you're going to have to talk with someone who has no clue what application you're trying to run, okay? We have all been there, okay? So very, very bad user experience. We need to change that. That is our prime directive. And if we start to change that, then we'll be able to innovate in the right direction. Because it is also so easy to try to do new things that are completely wrong, that makes things even worse, okay? So some of the things that our team, uh, we are about a team of 30 people, part of an IT department that has roughly 5,000 people, okay? A few things that we have done is that we have established a standard for device refresh. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? Is that depending on your job, we have tried to match the right device to the right job type. For example, a sales guy doesn't need a graphic workstation to go and see customers. A tablet might be a great thing for a sales guy, okay? And we need to make sure that the engineer get the right horsepower. You know, I have some engineers in our team, they get one of those laptops that has 
32 gig of RAM. They can run a few VMs on top of it. Okay. And now that is a standard that is available for some engineers. Okay. Make it a lot easier. We also saw that, you know, Samsung, it seems, is coming out with a new phone every three weeks or something like that. Okay. People want to see those new phones. Okay. So not only we make sure that we have a program to refresh our corporate smartphone, but also we establish an app portal so that if someone wants to file an expense report, for example, whatever device they're using, a laptop, a cell phone, a web browser, they can have the same experience. It is becoming more and more seamless for users to do their job. That makes it easier. They don't have now, you know, earlier I mentioned a sales guy that has a tablet. He doesn't have to go on to go to a web browser on a PC in order to file his expense report. He can do it on, on his cell phone, on his tablet. And lastly, what was mentioned, the IT Innovation Lab, as we have to create a bunch of stuff, we uh, built a business case to basically get a bunch of gear, put it in a nice lab, and start to run a bunch of stuff completely isolated from the rest of the world. Okay. So how were you able to do that? Okay. How can we innovate and in a very short period of time with a very small stuff come up with all this cool stuff? The first step is that you need to get executive support. Okay? We got that from our CIO. Our CIO told us, go and do stuff. That is the first step. But that's not enough. There are three things that absolutely you need to do. Very, very important when you innovate, you need to innovate on the right stuff. Okay? The right stuff is never the latest and greatest technology. It might be, but very often it is not. What is the right stuff if the stuff that matters to user community? Okay. And you need to find ways to get that from your users. Okay. So you can interview people. Okay. You can ask them, hey, what do you think is good? What do you think will be good? Okay. If you hear the same stuff 20 times, that might be a good idea. Okay. Tip. Do that in a very anonymous fashion. Tell them that you're going to collect their results, their things, okay, their ideas, but you're not going to give their names to anybody. We have a program, you know, that we started like this at Dell, and suddenly we're starting to hear people complaining a lot about stuff that slow them down in their day-to-day -day work. That's how we found some of the best ideas, okay? If you interview 10 different groups, and you hear six times people complaining about the same exact things, then that's perhaps worth working on it. And then you can start talking about it to other people. Crowdsourcing, okay? Start to basically have contests. Hey, what do you think would be a great idea to improve sales productivity? And see what people come up with. And let people vote to what the best, the best idea is. Day-to-day -day interaction. Look at ticket queues. Okay, the good old ticket queues when people come to call to complain about something that is broken. If you see the same thing being broken 500 times, do something about it. This is how not only you can uh, generate ID, but also present an ID to leadership to say, hey, you know, see, you know what? This is a problem that we see a lot, or an ID a lot of people ask for that. Let's make a project about it, okay? The next thing, as soon as you do that, your leadership is going to ask to tell you, good idea, but I'm not going to get you a penny to make it do it, okay? Show me why we should do it. Then you need to start the only language that your leadership will understand, business case, okay? What we do, is that we start with a four-step process when initially inception, we basically say, you know what? At the end of the day, this will save us some money or have some benefits that worth investing a bit. We play a little bit with it. Then we do a proof of concept where we really bring the technology into the lab. We try it out for a few months, perhaps even more, to really prove 
that it is, that it works. We can size it, okay? Then we start meeting with production IT to tell them, hey, look at this brand new thing. Let's work together on making it fit. What does that mean? We need to do training for operators if it is a new technology. We need to figure out, you know, what is the right gear that we want to use to deploy it in the data center. And then finally, we can transition it to production. And that's something that is very, very important. Okay. A mistake that a lot of people who innovate do is that once they create something, it becomes their baby. And they want to keep it and hug it. Okay. Let the baby grow. Get rid of it. Go to the next one. Very, very important. Right now, I spend a lot of my time working on OpenStack. Okay. My plan is in December to get done with this phase of OpenStack because I will work on something else. And production IT will take over the stuff that we have done. Very, very important. Learn how to let go and build a business case for the whole, for the whole step. Okay. To do that, that requires a special type of people. Okay. Because I'm talking about business case. Okay. I'm talking about being able to sell leadership on your ID. So you need people, you know, who understand business, who are not afraid to speak in front of an exec, who can articulate, even in French, okay? Who can very quickly make strategic de decision. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Based off a whole high-level strategy, okay? And also, we are very passionate about technology. Because when you talk to people, when you present them a new technology, you need to show, you know, if you really believe into it, in it, that will show, that will help you gain people to use your technology. So that is the third part, okay? You need to have the right type of people. You need to make sure that you've got a good business case through the whole process. If you don't have a business case, anything that you're going to do is going to be shut down very fast. And you need to make sure that you innovate on the right stuff. And innovate on the right stuff, need to really, you really need to listen to what is the stuff that people want and what is the stuff that people do not like, okay? And so one of the things that we have done is we started to do a private cloud, okay? Private cloud means that I'm going to have to spend a lot of money, okay? I'm going to buy servers, I'm going to buy switches, I'm going to buy software, okay? To build a lab, I'm going to spend a few hundred grants. Right there, that can be very painful for the business case, okay? If you deal with OpenStack, there's something that is absolutely beautiful, which is object store, okay? If you have to build a business case on OpenStack, here's how to do it, okay? Talk with your storage team, Ask them what they do today to archive data. You know, what technology they use to archive the stuff that they want to keep for five years. They're going to start to talk to you about putting it on a block array, enterprise grade block array, okay? Then how they take a snapshot. Then how they take the snapshot and they put it on tape. Then how they use, they have a beautiful contract with Iron Mountain to ship the tape out and keep it in a vault for five years. And then now, if they need the tape back, it's only going to cost two grand per tape to bring it back in a f f super fast. And then they might, in fact, need to buy a new block array in order to do some stuff just to make sure that everything works. Very quickly, you say, ah, you know what? I could replace all that by a few servers, okay? Run some software that is affordable, okay, put a few ops guy on top of it and be done and you're going to very easily show that using something like a Swift or a, uh, a Ceph or something like this, you can very easily show a 60 to 70 percent money saving, okay. Right there, leadership will listen to that and they will tell you, hey, you know what? Is there some other stuff in this OpenStack magic thing that saves so much money? And then you can tell them about the compute. 
And when we talk about the compute, you can start to find some example. The thing that we did at, at uh, Dell, you know, within Dell IT, okay, is that within Dell IT, we wanted to demonstrate that a software defined infrastructure could be efficient, secure, and give a great user experience. Example, I am a software dev guy, okay? I need some type of virtual machine to get something done, okay? Traditional IT, I talk with the network guy to get an IP address. I talk with the server guy to get an open system, an operating system stood up on a VM. I talk with the storage guy to get a bit of storage. One week later, one week later I have my virtual machine, which is perfect, except for a little fact, I now understand my software a bit better, and my virtual machine is the wrong size. Good news, you can change that and one week later you get the right one, okay? This is how a lot of IT department work, okay? So what we're going to bring is basically, look, we're going to bring you self-service. Your software dev is going to be able to, within a budget that we're going to predefine, provision their own stuff when they want it. Right there, there's also a business case. It's harder to measure but just the time that is going to be saved will allow your software devs to be more efficient. Also, since we are Dell, okay, and I've heard that Dell does some good hardware, as a partnership with some people, we need to make sure as Dell IT that we are a showcase for Dell. So only use Dell hardware, Dell on Dell, okay? That's what we need to do at the end of the day, okay? which give them, you know, and so what we're going to do for, for our private cloud is that we're using Dell servers, Dell networking for Sten, Dell storage, which is a mix of server with a bunch of drive on ecologic or compliant block systems, and we're going to heavily leverage our Red Hat partnership. Okay. And also very, very important, do not forget that there is some existing stuff, okay? In any IT shop today, you've got everything is running on top of VMware, okay? Make sure that you really understand how the stuff runs on top of VMware, what are the processes that are being used, so that you can identify some workloads that are candidate to be moved, so that once you have deployed your new infrastructure based on OpenStack that is slightly different, you can also have the right understanding to be able to start migrating your workload. Right now, you know, and things like SDN that Kamesh talked to, uh, no, Kamesh talked about storage, but the discussion around SDN is very, very important because if you start to have more flexible network, be able to have the legacy world and the new world talk together and you will be able to little by little split your application across or move them uh, around, okay? So based on that, we started to play in our lab, okay? And what we discovered very fast, okay, is that good news, we could build something, okay? Using a layer of the hardware, in the middle, have a bunch of virtualization, open stack with Red Hat, okay? Make sure that we keep in mind all the other stuff, which is VMware and everything Microsoft, okay? Then on top of that, start to layer some Dell software and work with the Dell software team to start to really leverage the Dell IT, uh, IP, inter um, intellectual property. The way, I like it, the way I like to say it is that if I take OpenStack with Red Hat and can start to add some Dell thing on top of it, that's really better and it's better for Dell too because we're using some of our, you know, we're drinking our own champagne, which is very interesting, okay. And what we discovered is that it was flexible, it was secure, and we found three key use cases, okay. Archive storage, which is good, because it was the basis of our business case, a lot of demand for that, okay. From just backing up to compliance, legal team loves us. You mean that now, I can store all the legal stuff that I have to keep and not have to save it on top of Amazon and I can save it in-house because those lawyers, they hate to have any data leave the building, okay? 
So that's great stuff, okay? The software devs, okay? Talk with your software dev teams. Show them that, look, you want a VM to just try an ID? Go for it, okay? They're going to love you. Then they're going to talk with your manager. Their manager are going to come to you and say, hey, we want to play in your lab. We want to try new stuff in your lab. Okay, that is great to help you move stuff forward. And if you're in an innovation business, we use that a lot in our lab to just incubate and try new stuff, a lot of technology. Okay. And so what we have done so far today, okay, is that we have demonstrated it works. And uh, our next step is really we're going, so we deployed OpenStack, okay, using uh, uh, OSP3 not really worrying about the stability of it, okay? We just wanted to show, look, here's something that can work. We got a lot of interest around it, okay? So now we're going to show that it can work for IT. Remember, the only thing, other than spending no money, that IT cares about is stability, okay? So we're going to deploy OSP4 as soon as I come back uh, to, to beautiful Texas, okay? We're going to deploy Havana, okay? We're not, you know, stable. We're not going to play with Facebook, with Facebook yet, okay? Stay with Havana. Make sure that we've got HA for the controller so that the API is always available. And then I'm going to pull a dirty trick on the rest of IT. I'm going to tell them, oh no, it's okay. I can upgrade my controller whenever I want. Change control window, end of the month freeze. I don't care about that your stuff is available 100% of the time. It is the end of maintenance windows. You need to show the new world, okay? We're going to uh, also, to be on the safe side, use Nova Networking rather than Neutron. I'm right now a bit uncomfortable with Neutron, so we're going to wait a little bit for that, okay? And since we're Dell, we're going to use some Dell storage, Ecologic, as a backend behind Cinder. And one thing that we have discovered is that the people who are interested by archive are not the same one that uh, the same people that are, that are interested by compute. So we're going to fully separate the two aspects. We're going to build storage cloud for archive, and we're going to build a compute cloud for the developers, basically. Okay. Which, by the way, will make our life a lot easier. And our path to success Okay, we are starting, this is based on the NIST uh, cloud reference architecture. We're going to start, you know, working very tightly with Red Hat, defining resource abstraction and control, which is basically OpenStack, what I'm going to put under OpenStack to make it work, to have a cloud that works, okay? then. I'm going to work with our IT operations to understand what are the business processes that they go through. If someone needs a virtual machine, where is the money coming from? How do we check that they've got enough money? Who has the authorization, who has the right to authorize the money to be spent? How, how is the showback system working? That is all basically a lot of the service orchestration. What type of service catalog do we want to have? To have application prepackaged or system prepackaged. We're going to build a layer of service orchestration on top of that. That we're also then going to take care of the VMware integration so that we can have under the same automation of the business processes, give people access to both the new stuff and the old stuff, okay? Uh, Sorry, I don't mean to be mean by calling VMware the old stuff, but the different views of the world. Let's put it this way, okay? So that fr from the people, from the developers, they can really pick and choose. And what we're going to see, I'm ready to bet that we're going to find that people who have applications that are fairly complex, that have a stateful, a stateful backend, fronted by a stateless backend, are going to very quickly ask, hey, can I put my stateful stuff on the very mature technology on top of ESX clusters? And can I put my stateless stuff on the top of the technology that has a very easy to manipulate API, 
so that I can scale it whenever I want without worries. So this is also what we're going to establish. And over the next few months, building that, we are going to figure what we really need to monitor, okay? Because it's useless to monitor everything, okay? You just need to figure what to monitor and when to act on it. For example, in a previous slide, I was working with some fairly large Swift deployments, okay? You do not care if you've got a large object store deployment. You do not care if a drive fails. You don't give a damn about it, okay? You just replace it whenever. This, is, this goes against a lot of the philosophy of IT. Is something break, I need to act on it. No. We need to also teach people that we need to build for the fact that things are going to fail. Okay. So this is all the green stuff, which is really the operation aspect and the final integration you know, with Active Directory and you know, identity management, Active Directory, ticket queues, this is what we're going to take at the end of it. And by the way, I have a secret objective, which is to get rid of ticket queues for this, okay? I do not want people, if they've got a problem using this private cloud platform, I do not want them to have to open a ticket, okay? Here's the concept of a ticket. I go to a web interface, I write my problem, and within 24 to 48 hours, someone who has no clue about what I'm doing is going to tell me that they're willing to help me if I give them more information. That is the wrong concept if we provide self-service to the infrastructure. Okay. So we are going to experiment with basically what a lot of companies are doing today, which is social media, knowledge base, user groups, um, very polished IRC-like channels, okay? Make them all pretty so that, you know, people can hopefully get instant feedback, instant support, okay? That is what we believe is going to help us transform IT on bring a private cloud within IT. What we did one year ago, when I had my first meeting with the infrastructure, with the IT, I joined Dell IT one year ago. When I had my first meeting with the infrastructure management team, I was basically told that it was very nice of me to meet with them, but it was probably the last meeting ever that I will have with them since my career was over in Dell IT, since I wanted to do all this fancy stuff, okay? Then, as of roughly one month ago, the same team has created a small team whose only job is to become the operators of whatever I'm building right now. They're now got to the point where they're ready to accept, okay? And we are probably going to end them out our first stable iteration of a private cloud in July, okay? That matches all the Dell internal requirements. Working on that with some of the people that you saw earlier, Okay, to make sure that we get the best of the Dell Red Hat partnership. And probably toward the end of the year, that will be in production within the Dell IT data center. Okay. So that's it for me. Okay, any questions? Yes. So uh, we're talking about that with them right now. It will really depend of the comfort factor that they have, okay? Um, if they want to be very cautious, we are basically uh, going to stick with OSP4 on, a, on, a, on the uh, Nova networking for a bit longer. However, there is a big, there's a big challenge. Is that upgrading from Havana to ISAUS would be a very fun exercise. So it's why hopefully we're going to see if, look, this is the new stuff. It's not as nice. It's not as refined potentially, but it should be easier to upgrade in the future, okay? 
So that's what we're going to do. And in June, July, we're not yet going to carry production workload. So it will still be okay to play around with it. Does that, does that answer? So they are a love neutron, a love neutron for the features, okay? Um, I have banged my head against neutron where, you know, uh, layer three can be very interesting to make sure that I do not have a single point of failure, okay? Being IT, I want stability at all costs. I will sacrifice features in order to get stability. Okay, right now, I believe that we still need a little bit. I do not know if it will be, you know, to Juno or perhaps after to have a very stable neutron where I am sure that there is no single point of failure. Because today, if in an IT data center, if you've got a server that has two NICs, okay, the network should always be up, period. Right now, I'm not comfortable do, uh, building that with neutron. Any other question? Okay, well, thank you. And uh, what I hope to do is that, or myself, or someone from my team at the uh, Paris summit will be able to come and say, look, we went even faster than what we thought we were doing. We're already in production. That will be the perfect world. We can always dream. Thank you. <laughs>